Welcome back to the complete online dressage course by How To Dressage. Now in this presentation, we're going to be looking at the final training scale, which is scale six collection. And this is also the last video of this module. So we're going to look at what does collection actually mean? We're gonna look at what are the benefits of collection, the link between collection and extension. We're gonna look at the various degrees of collection, we're going to answer the question of how much collection is required and obviously we're going to look at how to train collection. So as a quick recap, here is your dressage scales of training pyramid. Now back in the day when the horse was used as a war horse, control and mobility literally meant life and death. And this is where collection comes into play because the horse who was able to collect made for a safer and more reliable horse in battle. Now, collection is the last of the training scales. And because of this, it's dependent on a fair degree of accomplishment of the earlier scales. So you need a good amount of rhythm, suppleness, contact, impulsion, straightness, and obviously relaxation underpins everything. Now, if there are any missing links in these earlier stages, then achieving true collection will not be possible. Now, collection is the culmination of all your training. It is the true and final objective of equitation. So, what exactly is collection? Well, collection is basically the rebalancing of the horse. Now, this rebalancing makes the horse more able to perform ridden movements with ease and in a beautiful and biomechanically functional carriage that gives the appearance of travelling uphill. Now, basically, we're teaching the horse to carry more of the weight on his hindquarters than on his shoulders. And this is exactly what we were talking about back in the About Dressage video at the beginning of this course. This is basically the whole purpose of dressage, which is to rebalance the horse. So when we look at collection, we're looking to see differences in the stride length. So the strides should be shorter. We also look for differences in the stride height. The stride should be taller. And obviously, as we mentioned, the overall balance should be different. So we should have more weight clearly on the hind quarters than on the shoulders. Now, this creates a shorter and taller outline. But that shorter and taller outline is a result of that rebalancing. It's not because you've just shortened the reins and pulled the neck higher. Yes, by pulling back on the reins, you may artificially make the outline shorter and taller, but this is not correct true collection. So now let's talk about how we go about identifying correct collection. Well, if the horse is truly collected, you will see the hind quarters engage and lower. You will also see the hind legs flex and push the weight upwards. You will see a roundness of the back and you will also see a raising and roundness of the neck with the head either on or slightly in front of the vertical. You will also see a shortened base of support, which we're going to talk about later on in this presentation. And overall, the horse will have a greater mobility of the horse's shoulders. So as you can see, there's a lot of points to collection. It's not simply just a shorter stride. This is a big misconception of collection. A lot of people think that in order to collect their horse, all they have to do is to make the stride shorter. And that is not the case. Okay, so now let's take a look at what the FEI and British Dressage have to say about collection. Well, they say that the aim of collection is to further develop and improve the equilibrium of the horse, which has been more or less displaced by the additional weight of the rider. In essence, this is what we were talking about earlier, where we were talking about rebalancing the horse. Now, we also want to develop and increase the horse's ability to lower and engage his hindquarters for the benefit of the lightness and mobility of his forehand. Then it also adds to the ease and carriage of the horse, thereby making him more pleasurable to ride. So here's another quote from the FEI when it comes to collection. 
So they say that through the systematic development of collection, the horse will show an enhanced quality of the natural paces. Now, through the increased engagement of the hind legs and lightness of the shoulders, the paces will appear lighter and freer. Now, through the development of impulsion, they will show more cadence. And it is only through true development of collection that breathtaking extensions can be produced correctly. Now, just note there that, yes, we are talking about collection, but collection also leads to correct extensions, which we're also going to talk about later on in this presentation. And also note the words of impulsion and also cadence, which refer to other training scales that we've talked about in previous presentations. Now, the FEI also state that the collected horse gives the impression of moving uphill. The steps become shorter but the activity in impulsion is sustained and makes the horse's movement appear more cadenced. Now, hopefully you can begin to see how all of this starts to click together and why collection is so important, why it's the culmination of your training and why it is the pinnacle of dressage. Okay, so let's move on and we're now going to talk about collection and balance. Now, this is what I was referring to earlier when we noted that when the horse is truly collected, the horse's base of support is shorter. So if we take a look at this image, you'll notice two horses. So the horse in green is working in quite a free and open outline. And if you look at its base of support, so running from its foreleg to its hind leg, you'll notice that it's got quite a long base of support. However, if we look at this horse that's outlined in black, which is highly collected, you'll notice that its base of support is a lot shorter. And this is because in order to be truly collected, the horse's hind legs have had to step further underneath his body. And as we mentioned, the horse's stride length becomes shorter and his stride height becomes taller. Now, because this creates this shorter base of support, it means that the horse needs more balance. And so does the rider. Because if you imagine a rider sitting on the horse's back and you're asking the horse to step further underneath and work with this smaller base of support, if the rider is not balanced and is moving all over the place, it's going to be very hard for the horse to work in this shorter and taller frame and to be able to maintain true collection. Now, we talk more about this in the presentation about the horse's balance later on in this course, but because it is so vitally important, we just want to note it here in collection. Okay, so now let's move on to talk about some of the benefits of collection. Now, I know we talked about collection being the rebalancing of the weight, but why do we want to do that? What are the benefits? Well, when the horse is truly collected, it will enhance the quality of the horse's natural paces. And it will also make transitions smoother and more fluent. It overall makes the horse a much more easier and more pleasurable ride. But the most important benefit of collection is that it limits the wear and tear on your horse's front limbs. Now, if you bear in mind that most lameness happens in the horse's front weaker limbs, by transferring that weight and putting more of it onto the stronger hind limbs, we therefore improve our horse's soundness. Now, this helps us to prevent injury in our horses and also greater the chance that he will have a longer working life. So, now let's talk about collection and extension. We did say earlier that in order to extend correctly, the horse also needs to be able to collect correctly. So we're going to cover about why exactly that is. Well, what you want to do is you want to think of your horse's hind legs as a spring. Now, as mentioned, we're going to be transferring most of the weight back to the hind legs. Now, when the horse is truly collected, that power is concentrated and it's concentrated like a spring pushing down. Now, when that energy is stored, he is then able to either push that power up, so to create a collected pace with a taller and higher stride, or they can push that power forwards and therefore create an extended pace. 
So the ability to collect is needed for these extended paces. So before the transition, the rider makes the half halt, they shift the weight back onto the hind legs, which concentrate that spring. And then as mentioned, the spring is then released and that power is created to make the extended pace. So that stored energy on the hind leg can be used in those two ways. You can use it to push the horse upwards into that shorter, taller, higher stride for collection, or you can allow it to be released forwards, which create that extended lengthening stride. Now, if the rider just pushes forward without concentrating that energy on the hind legs like a spring, then it's very likely that they'll just push their horse onto their forehand and out of their natural rhythm. And this is when you see horses rushing and just quickening the tempo rather than extending. Now, we talk more about the half halt and how to lengthen the horse's strides correctly in other modules further along in this course. But the purpose of these two strides was to just show you how collection is needed for the extensions and why how learning how to collect your horse correctly will also mean that you'll be able to lengthen your horse's strides easier and correctly. So now let's talk about the degrees of collection. Now it's important to realise that collection comes in degrees. It's not as though it's there or not. Collection is not static. Now, even a very young horse moving in balance has a degree of collection, albeit a very small degree of collection. Now, the higher the level, the higher the degree of collection required. For example, a 10 metre circle still requires a degree of collection, but it doesn't require as much collection as a canter pirouette or a piaf. So let's look at the degrees of collection and what is expected at each stage. So first up, let's look at the first degree of collection. Now, this is what you expect to see in a young horse or one that is being retrained or that is new to dressage, just been backed, etc. Now, the transitions will usually be progressive and this is totally acceptable because it allows the horse to keep his balance. Now, from the judge's perspective, a horse who remains on the bit into and during the halt but then takes a couple of steps of walk before going into a trot, should still be awarded a mark of possibly about a seven or even an eight. And this is because the transition from halt into trot isn't expected to be direct at this stage of the horse's training. However, further on down the line, if the horse continues to make those steps of walk into the trot in, say, a medium level test, then that horse wouldn't score more than a six because the horse is expected to be more collected, be able to step under further and make that direct transition from the halt into the trot. But in the first degree of collection stage with a young horse, transitions are more than acceptable to be progressive. Now, when it comes to halting, the halt may not be completely square behind. And again, that's totally acceptable for a horse at the beginning of his career. So now let's talk about second degree collection. So a horse that's working at this level will now be able to make those direct transitions and will be able to do so in balance. No longer will they need to be made progressive. The horse will be able to maintain its balance going from one pace straight into another. The horse will also now be able to show a shortening throughout his whole body. So as we talked about earlier, when collected correctly, the horse will show a shorter and taller frame. And this is when we start to see it. And then we get to third degree collection. So a horse at this level will now be able to carry at least half of his body weight on his hind quarters. The carriage will be more uphill, the transitions will be smoother and the horse will appear light on his feet. Now this is a very advanced degree of collection. So the horse will also be able to show the beginnings of the advanced collected movements such as piaf and passage. And then finally, we have fourth degree collection, and this is the most advanced level seen in the horses working at Grand Prix level. Now, when we talk about these higher degrees of collection, there is a small warning and a note to be aware of. So let's first start by taking a look at this picture. 
So this is a horse working in collection. The weight has shifted to the hind quarters. His hind legs are stepping further underneath his body. And this is therefore lifting the forehand and making his shoulders more freer. And it results in a shorter and taller frame with a shorter and taller stride. But there is a limit to this. You can over engage your horse. And this is when his hind legs come too far underneath his body and therefore he loses the ability to move forwards. Now this happens when the weight comes too far back and the horse ends up losing his balance. Now when the horse's balance is compromised like this, he may be unable to answer your aids at all. He basically becomes stuck with his hind legs underneath his body. Now when he's in this position, it can also lead to rearing. And you can understand how this can happen. The weight comes further and further back, the hind legs come further and further under, and the shoulders come higher and higher and higher. And as you're asking the horse to go forward, he physically cannot, he therefore has nowhere else to go rather than up. So when you are working in these high degrees of collection, just note that it is possible to over-engage your horse. And that even though you are aiming for this shorter and taller outline with these shorter and taller strides, the horse must still continue to work forwards. So that was one very important thing to be aware of when you are working in high degrees of collection. But there's also another important thing to be aware of, which we're going to discuss in this slide. And that is that the degree of collection which is required at each test and at each level must be sufficient to enable the horse to perform the required movement with ease and fluency. Now what that means is that when you first start to find collection on your dressage test sheets, when it's first introduced, they're not looking for a great deal amount of collection. All the judge is looking for is that the horse can bring his weight enough off his shoulders to be able to perform, for example, a 10 meter circle without struggling, or that the horse can make a downward transition from canter to walk without pitching forward and putting all of his weight onto his shoulders and into the reins. So don't try to cram your horse together between stronger hands and legs to try to find shorter steps. All the judge wants to see is that the horse can perform the required movement with that ease and fluency. Now, if the horse doesn't have enough collection for the movement, then it will result in loss of submission. So if you try to ride that 10 meter circle without the horse being sufficiently collected for it, then the horse will be unable to do it. And that is where you will lose marks. However, if the horse can collect enough to perform that movement smoothly and in balance, then that is all the collection that is required. Now, as you begin to move up the levels, you should be able to produce a little more collection each time. And the higher the level, the higher the degree of collection is required until at the very top levels, you have enough collection to produce, for example, a canter pirouette whilst remaining in balance and being able to do so with visible ease. Now, if you try to collect your horse too quickly, without allowing it to mentally and physically develop, this can result in false collection. And this is where the horse's back stays flat or hollow. Now to demonstrate this point, I want you to imagine that you have decided to start weightlifting and you want to do squats whilst carrying a weight. Now when you start, you wouldn't go over to the weight bench and pick up the heaviest weight because you could either fail to lift it altogether or if you do manage to squat up and squat down with it, your form will most likely be incorrect and it will lead to strain, injury and possibly irreparable damage. Now this same principle applies to your horse. Your horse has to learn how to carry not only some of its own body weight on his hind legs, but he also has to carry your weight as the rider, as well as the saddle and any other equipment which he is wearing. So what we do is we start by asking for just small amounts of weight and asking it to just displace that little bit more to the hind legs. And we do it gradually. And this helps to build the horse's strength and helps to make sure that the horse has the correct form and that he is carrying the weight in a functional manner for his level of training. 
And we then build it up in degrees, the same as you would if you started weightlifting. You would start with a small weight, you would get the form correct, you would do little bits at a time, and you would gradually increase the weight. The same is for collection. The development must be progressive. We must be gradually shifting that weight to the hind legs. And the dressage judges and the people who make these dressage tests are aware of it. So when you start working through the levels and you first start encountering collection, just note that it's not a great deal. You don't need to start cramming your horse together to try and find these shorter steps. It only has to be enough to perform the required movement with ease. But the further up the levels you go, the more collection you should be able to show because the more collection is required. But this should be logical and progressive for the horse so that he's never overburdened and that his ability to collect is a systematic development. So now we know all about what collection is, we know about the degrees of collection, we know that it should be progressive. How do we go about training for collection? So let's start by first going over some prerequisites. Now, as you know, collection is the final scale in the dressage scales of training. Therefore, you and your horse must have already achieved a fair degree of rhythm, suppleness, contact, impulsion, and straightness. Now, if you've just jumped into this presentation and you have not watched the others, then I urge you to go back and watch the other presentations first, because if you haven't ticked those off, then true collection will not be possible. Now, on top of that, your horse must also have some muscular strength, some balance, and an understanding and acceptance of the aids for positioning, transitions, and half halts. Essentially, at this stage, you want to be able to work your horse in a good rhythm with active hind legs working over his back and seeking an elastic contact. And your horse should be responsive to your aids and especially should have an understanding of the half halt. Now, once you have those in place, you are ready to start collection. Now, one thing to note about training collection is that it's about increasing the engagement using a combination of aids and patterns. So basically you're using dressage test movements such as 10 meter circles, shoulder in, traverse, half pass, leg yields, etc., to increase the engagement and therefore develop collection. What you're not doing is just riding around the arena trying to shorten the stride, shorten the stride, shorten the stride by using more rein and more leg aids. That is not correct collection. Instead, you're going to use the dressage test movements as training tools and they're going to help you gradually increase engagement over time and therefore improve the degree of collection. So now let's talk about how we actually go about doing this. So firstly, we're going to cover the aids and then I will give you an example of how you can use a dressage test movement to improve your horse's collection. So let's first start with the aids. So to help your horse collect, you're first going to use a leg aid to create impulsion. Now, collected paces actually need more impulsion than the working paces. So you're going to use quick leg aids, but not strong leg aids, and you're going to use them to just keep the horse's hind legs stepping briskly forwards and under. Now, at the same time, you're going to use a half fault to recycle the energy, and you're going to use a small seat action. Now, your seat action determines the length of stride. So you want a smaller upward push with the seat to encourage the horse to create smaller and taller steps. Now, the half halt and the seat action are necessary because that helps the horse understand that you want shorter and taller strides rather than him misinterpreting your impulsion and your driving aids as an instruction to go forward into a medium or extended stride. So if we look at it here on this diagram, your leg aids are creating impulsion and encouraging the hind leg step further underneath. And then rather than letting that energy go forward into that medium or extended stride, you are doing a small half halt and a small seat action to encourage the horse to come up in a taller and shorter frame rather than simply extending forwards. Now, as we mentioned earlier, we're not just going to ride around the arena trying to collect the horse, going through these aids over and over again, trying to improve collection. 
Instead, we're going to use the school movements and lateral work to help us, and this is how we do it. So let's start with step one. So you need to use smaller patterns, things such as 10 meter circles, and you can also use things such as counter canter, direct transitions, and lateral work. Now you're going to ride these movements, but at the same time, you're going to use these aids in your half halt to suggest that the horse stays up and off his shoulders whilst you ride them. For example, if you are riding a 10 meter circle in canter, in order for your horse to keep his balance in that 10 meter circle, his hind legs are gonna to have to come further underneath himself anyway. So you can use that to help you maintain the collection and to go through these aids. And then when you travel forwards out of that circle, you're basically going to suggest to the horse that he remains in that same new balance because you're going to keep the aids going and keep encouraging him to lift his front end and not allow it to drop back down. And you're going to support that stepping under with your driving aids, your legs creating that impulsion and encouraging the horse to stay up in that new balance. If you feel the horse's front end start to drop down again, then you can pop him back onto a 10 meter circle to re-establish that new balance and to shift his weight back more onto his hind legs. Encouraging him to stay in this new shorter and taller frame with a shorter stride length and a taller stride height. The end goal is that you will have your horse's hind legs working with plenty of activity. Remember that the collected strides need more impulsion than the working paces. The horse will also have supple bending in all the joints and his hind legs will be well engaged beneath his body. Now what you want to produce eventually once you work through all the degrees of collection is that you want an image of the horse sitting. And this is what you see in the ultimate expressions of collection such as Piaf and the canter pirouette. So before we wrap up this presentation, here's one last training tip when it comes to collection. And that is you're going to picture the horse being the same length in front of the saddle as he is behind the saddle. So if you imagine you would be sat round about here, you would have the same length of horse in front as you would behind. Now, when you are trying to collect the horse, if he shortens in the front half, but not the back half, then you know that this is incorrect. All that's happened is the horse has simply shortened his neck. He hasn't shortened his frame by taking his hind legs more underneath his body. To collect correctly, you want to feel as though the horse shortens throughout his whole frame equally, not just in the front half. So that's a nice little training tip to help you when you are trying to collect. So to summarize this presentation, collection is the sixth training scale and it's the culmination of all of your training. It should be thought of as a rebalancing of the weight carriage towards the haunches and not as a shortening of the stride. The shorter and higher steps of collection are a result of the rebalancing. If you try to shorten the strides artificially, it will result in stiffening and a loss of activity, which is exactly what the judges do not want to see. Now also remember that collection comes in degrees, it's not static, and the degree of collection required in tests at each level must be sufficient to enable the horse to perform the required movement with ease and fluency. And finally, in order to train collection, you do it through the combination of aids and school movements. These help to strengthen and further engage the horse, helping him to find that new balance. Now this presentation was brought to you by How To Dressage. If you would like to continue with this course, then please visit course.howtodressage.com. Thank you very much for watching.